Hi guys, this is Michael from the Board Games Coin Pool again. Today I have a material for you about the Traces of War. This will be kind of a teach and play. So we will be uh, uh, teaching you the rules while playing the actual games. I already created the first video about this title from the VUCA Games by Tetsuya Nakamura, uh, where you have a historical background, uh, where you have also a component description, uh, where you have some, some, some also game mechanics. I encourage you to check it. It will be below the video and also in the links. Today we'll simply go through the first uh, shorter scenario. The game can take up to eight turns. Uh, the shorter scenario is only four turns. It tells us about the story of the uh, Soviet counterattack after the uh, Kursk battle. Uh, in the rule book, you have very nicely described from the historical perspective what happened. So the initial counterattack just after the Kurds, and then later uh, the July December, and then December April. So this is just after the Kursk, and this is the second part. So this will be mainly the deeper crossing and then reaching the breakthrough areas. Uh, because the game is pretty big, I am giving you the overview now, but then we'll be zooming in into particular areas of interest. This is a cheat pool driven game, with very suitable for the solitaire play. We have even some speci specific and special you know, tray for all the components for the solo play. So you have here the turn track, here you have the cheats for the armies to be drawn, and here you have also when particular cheats are entering the game, uh, if needed we'll be using Luftwaffe box, uh, uh, crossing points and victory points, yeah, and so we will put it for now here. And uh, from the strategic point of view for this short scenario, what uh, Russians has to do is to cross the deeper because they will be getting the points for the crossing yeah, of the river here. You can also observe some specific um, uh, cities like Kharkov, Stalino, Dnipropetrovsk, Kiev, Ternopol, Odessa. These are the uh, cities uh, which, according to the order of uh, Hitler, has to be held till the last man. And if um, such a city will be entered uh, by the Russian unit, it's automatically victory for the Russians. However, uh, thanks to some special cheats, uh, uh, actually OKH cheats, the Germans, Meinstein, their um, general, will be negotiating with the high command and getting rid of some of those orders. You see, Supreme Command Order. That's how does it look like? And then it will allow to retreat from there. Some security divisions here, here and here. The biggest thrust will come from here, from the Voronezh front. You can see a lot of units here. Uh, they will be fighting with the 4th Panzer Army. Uh, additional big thrust will be here in Izumi re region uh, from the uh, southwestern front. Uh, they are faced by the 1st Panzer Army. Here we will have more or less quiet front. Here the area of uh, uh, it will be mainly Beogorod. It will be really hard to take. There's a lot of hills here, so you will see some stagnation, but usually the thrust goes here. Now, how we calculate the victory points? Let me show you victory conditions for this scenario. Victory conditions for this scenario are for automatic if a major city hex under supreme command order gets Soviet control. Race to the Dnipro, so the four turns, uh, will be getting five points for each crossing point under Soviet control. Crossing points are those orange axes. Uh, later on, each mechanized unit west of the Dnipro able to trace line of supply. Each non-mechanized unit is able to trace supply. Then the units which are not able to trace supply, you have those points for this. The funny thing is that the eight turns uh, um, scenario, the full campaign has completely different victory points. For example, taking major cities, getting here to the breakthrough areas, destroying Germans. So my experience shows that you play 
quite differently, whether it's full campaign or a short scenario, for turn or versus a turn, which is really good because that gives completely different different taste and flavor. I put only some of the reinforcements for, for the Russians and some for the Germans will not be using in this shorter scenario, all of them. And by the way, I'm not sure if we'll play the whole four turns, would it, whether it would not be too long. For sure, I would like to play first two turns to show you how this additional cheats also get into the, into the play. Uh, we will be using extensively the player age sheet really nicely done on the cardboard paper, but book a simulation, you have all the needed rules here, all the tables, terrain chart, also the negotiating points, how many you get based on the CP control. So the more success the Russians have, the more support the Germans will have, because in the case of zero crossing points, they have only three points. In case of seven crossing points taken by the Russians, uh, the Germans have only 5.5 .5 negotiating points, four uh, Luftwaffe mar markers, and the OKH can activate up to 10 units. The negotiating points will allow us to cancel Supreme Command Order, so both. Others, but also to get Panzer, Infantry, or Axis Minor reinforcements. Really, really cool stuff. Okay. The special rule says that before we start the actual game, we can designate as Russians one of the fronts and attack with it. So, of course, it will be Warner's front, and we will zoom in in a moment here to attack. In essence, when you draw a cheat from the container, here, uh, here are the cheats. You can activate the HQ and all units uh, in the command range of this HQ. The Russian HQ has usually six command range. The German ones uh, have also six, yeah. This is six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. All the units currently are, which are <clears throat> in the, in the um, color coded with color coded cheats are uh, activated by particular um, HQ. But when this unit will be here, it can also be activated by this uh, fourth Panzer Army HQ. So, in essence, the colors, color coding of the armies and fronts is used only for the setup. Then later on, it does not have any influence. So, you order all the units which are within the range of the HQ. <clears throat> We'll be doing, of course, move and combat, and you have a choice, either to first combat and then move, or maybe move and then do the combat. You will see how, how, how it goes in the, in the play. Okay, uh, so uh, in the first turn, you can see here, let, let me let me allow you for, the, for a zoom in, because without this you will not see it. During the first turn, Axis has like three command cheats. Soviets uh, usually have, uh, usually always have six of them. And yeah, we have four cheats. And you know, um, those command tokens represent the armies. So this is the first Panther army. This is the eighth army. This is fourth Panther army. And this is the sixth Panther army. Russians also have such command tokens, but they are doubled, yeah? We have two for each of the fronts. To here, to here, to here. They have also reinforcements, which they can get here from the cheat. And they have also here the southwestern front. On top of this, we have also the supply, which will be checked only when this token is taken out of the container. And then some additional tokens will be added during, during the turns. So how do we prepare now the, the cup? The Russians has to put everything inside uh, what they plan for the turn. And they, of course, will plan at least two Voronezh front attacks because uh, that's what, what, what makes more logic, the biggest forces. However, they have restrictions that they need to have at least one token from each army. So at the beginning of the turn, you know that you need to have those four tokens, which leaves you only with the two additional tokens you can take, and those two additional will be one for the Voronezh front, 
and one for reinforcements. So that would be my decision. Uh, all the rest would be inactive this turn. It goes for inactive ones, yeah. And now, so this goes to the cup. Now, the Germans need to choose one of those, uh, three of those four, only three chiefs. Later on, I think we have many more. For sure, they would like to move with this army. And there will be also possibility to move some um, very strong divisions like Totenkopf, uh, like uh, Das Reich, maybe uh, Viking and so on from here. So we'll also take that chip. And the question is whether we move this or this army. Uh, here we would not have too much action, most probably on the other hand, uh, we saw that the Russians are taking uh, some plans into that direction, so we'll get this. So we are not using the aid army. Those three, we can either put here or hold in hand, and during any moment during the turn, put them here. What gives this to the Germans? It gives them possibility, for example, to wait until all Russian moves are done and only then do theirs or maybe put those <coughs> command tokens immediately in a hope, for example, that we can retreat before they will hit us. Uh, because this is solo game, I will put all of them here, but enough to say that you have an option as a German player, and you will have even more options when we will be playing OK, OK H tokens later on. We need also to add the supply token. Sure, yeah. Shake it, and now start with the uh, first turn, and the first turn starts with a special rule. That means, <clears throat> as I told you, that we can activate. Yeah, turn one, special rule. So, uh, before the command sheet selection, we actually did it already, but this is solo play, so don't worry. Uh, activate one of your HQs and all units in its range. Initiate combat with them now. Then the game continues as usual. So, going through the turns. So let me now change the camera zoom so we can be closer to the tokens and to the actual battles. Okay, so we are at the north northern part of the front. We can see the Voronezh front here, pretty powerful. We are able to attack with all the units in the range of the Voronezh front HQ. It has six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. All of those purple units will be able to attack. The stacking limit is two units, so you can see that the first line of the Soviet uh, is, is, is fully packed. Uh, they will be mainly attacking against the rough terrain. This is the rough terrain, which will be giving one column shift to the, uh, to the German. Uh, on the German side, we have mainly the uh, infantry divisions with a strength of three. Sometimes you have panzer divisions. You can see st attack strength eight, defense five. Also here, two panzer divisions. Here you have additional uh, infantry and one more panzer division in, in here. In total, fourth panzer army have one, two, three, four panzer division. Now, when attacking, uh, we are con uh, uh, we're calculating the odds and always um, round down. This is the um, uh, general rule. And you need to have at least one to one odds in order to be able to attack. This is how the combat resolution table looks like. It's one to one, one to one to five, and up to ten. And here you have the results. A means attacker loses one step or two. R means retreat, that means two retreats, and that means one defender on step loss plus two retreats, and you have even more step losses here. It's not so easy to um, cause the step losses. Oftentimes, what helps is that when the enemy has to retreat via the enemy zone of control, then they would lose one additional step. Now, we would have a couple of attacks here, so I will use such small, nice red cubes, which will help us to mark them. Then, later on, if there are not so many attacks, it might not be needed. So, 
So we'll definitely would like to attack here and this one infantry division. And here we have a huge, huge uh, forces. It's always a good question whom to attack, whether the Panzer divisions immediately or try to encircle them and attack the weaker, uh, the weaker infantry. So I will go with all these forces here, all these forces here, and exactly will try not to hit the Panzer divisions, but to hit uh, the infantry ones. And with those two guys, we can hit here. Okay. Uh, remember, we have only attacks, we don't have moves. So we have like four attacks, two guys here, two guys here, two guys here, and those here. Let's see how it will go. I have here my die, so we'll roll with red die. And we'll be checking the, the results. We start from this attack. Okay, this is attack through the... Mm, uh, this is clean terrain. Yeah, clean terrain. 4, 8, 8 to 3. This is 2 to 1. Yeah, so we are attacking uh, not on 3 to 1, but 2 to 1. So 4, 5, 6 will create very retreat. Not high chances, but still some. Uh, it's even worse because on 2 to 1, this means the attacker loses one step. And we can choose which division. Let's say this one. Not a perfect beginning. Attack here. This is, I believe, rough terrain. And here we have 8, 16 to 3. This is 5 to 1 because of a for, uh, rough terrain, 4 to 1. 4 to 1, 6, that might be something significant. 4 to 1, 6 means one loss on the defender side and two retreats. And they should retreat toward their supply center, so rather this direction. So, 1, 2. And now uh, the infantry can get on this hex. The Mechanized units can get to hexes whichever direction they want. It doesn't have to be here, it can be here or here. And uh, moving here will cause actually those guys having problems to, 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 to reach it. On the other hand, yeah, we are just getting um, some, some nice breakthrough. Um, what I would like to show you guys, and this is definitely a design, a design decision by the author. The um, average uh, German division, infantry division, has five movement points. The average Russian division has four movement points. Uh, because when you leave uh, uh, an enemy zone of control or you enter an enemy zone of, zone of control, you need to spend two additional points. The Russians will never be able to catch up with a, def with a retreating German. So let me show you the example of the two, two divisions. We have such situation. And I would like to show you how the Russians will, not ever, will never be able to catch up with a retreating German unless their cheat is first in our drone. Uh, when Germans retreat, they move three here because two uh, exiting the uh, zone of control and plus one for the uh, clear terrain. So this is three, four, five. Now, let's assume this is Russian turn. They move one, two, stop. In order to get here, they would need to spend three more points and they have only four points of movement. So this is definitely a very interesting design, design uh, function. And you see even the weekend German infantry has five movement points. Why the weekend uh, Russian infantry has three movement points. Okay, enough of strategy, now we hit here, and this is a huge attack. This is 22 to 3, 7 to 1, and of course there is a rough te uh, terrain, so this is 4 to 1. 4 to 1, 4 should be, uh, excuse me, 7 to 1, minus 1, this is 6 to 1, 6 to 1, 4. 
This is one hit and two retreats. So those guys uh, do one, two. And I will definitely would like to go farther. Now let's see if we can order those guys. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yes. Remember, uh, one, two, three, four, five from here. Uh, remember that the command range can actually uh, be traced through the uh, enemy zone of control and enemy unit. In order to keep supply, maybe we will do it that way. Because we can potentially move those guys here too. Well, let's risk it. Let's put all the guards to the front. Mm -hmm. Now we have attack here. Or we can actually split into two attacks. This is uh, nine. This is nine. So it's either three to one, three to one. Minus one for the rough terrain, so we attack on two to one, which is not the highest possibility. And either we can do 18 to three, which is six to one, and then five to one. So I rather prefer this larger attack. Okay, six to one, three. Uh, yeah, because it was nine, nine. Now this is 18 to three, six to one, five to one. Die was free. RR. Not huge. And you see, there will be losses because those guys cannot retreat without entering enemy zone of control here. And here we have enemy zone of control. So they move here. And they move here. And they are reduced once. So we can push here most probably. Uh, the infantry and of course we can enter this hex with the mobile units and get one around so it could be here so this would be the situation after this initial combat phase interesting situation uh, what we can see is at least part of the forces are now uh, uh, um, encircled we still can escape, for example, if we need to move with these panzers. Going from here to here costs them five points, because this is two for exiting the enemy zone of control, two for entering enemy zone of control, and one for the terrain. So this is five, and here is another five. So they still can get out, but not far away. Yep, let's see how it goes. Now let's change the zoom. So we can see broader theater of operation and we'll be drawing the command cheats. Okay guys, let's continue. I change zoom a bit, which should allow you to better observe yeah, the actions. So we now start to draw the cheats and we shall see which armies will move. First, we got the sixth army. So we actually have possibility to activate those units here in the south. We can't move that right because it's in the city under the supreme command order. But what we would like to do, and uh, definitely we should plan for it, the German, uh, the Russian attacks. And what we would like to do is to be able to fight them off. So we move here for three points. Actually, if we move from here to here, combine two units, we are exiting the, the enemy zone of control and entering enemy zone of control and amassing the troops here. We'll do the same here in this place. Now let me help myself with this. Those guys will go here. Those will go here, most probably, and those here. So we try to amass those forces. Now, I would like to move those mobile forces uh, back to start uh, plugging the gaps, which inevitably will happen here. So we'll take those guys one 
so three, four, five, six. Um, I didn't tell you, but we have also something like um, strategic movement. If you start on the road, continue on the road, do not enter the enemy zone of controls, you can move on the road half uh, point, movement point. But not in this case. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And we are still within the command range of this unit. Similarly, both. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep, this would be our. Uh, our contingency group. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They are here. Yeah, I'm taking those panther divisions here. Let's see if it's a good move or not. And this is an executed one. We don't do anything else. We still have range. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, to those guys. The game continues. Uh, what we got is a fourth panzer army. Lucky guys, really lucky ones, because otherwise the uh, Voronezh front would smash through them. So they definitely would like to retreat a bit, or even more a bit. Let's go step by step. This is three, four, five. This is three, four, five. Uh, we need to do something about those guys, of course. Mm -hmm. We'll put them uh, back a bit. Panther division will go here. And we need also to remember about those guys to be able to activate them. See, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, uh, we go three, four, five, only up to here. But at least we would have two units there. Now, and the panzers, it will be problematic, but we can also make it happen. Uh, we move three, four, three, four, five. Okay, we move those guys here. Now, the panzer divisions this is five, and this is five movement points. And now, as for those, this is five. And now we can move freely up to here. Both will move here. And those will move here because of five points. Not sure if it's perfect and the best, but at least, uh, yeah, it allows them to retreat more or less in order. This is still not the most uh, uh, well well defended area but better than nothing okay where are the soviet counters where they are okay southern front southern front is here really not very very helping we we really wait for this one so what we can do now here i see the Germans managed to amass huge forces here. We will need to try to crush them. Yeah, there is no other way. So we will put those guys here and attack from the three sides. Other than that, we could possibly go here, but we can be crushed pretty quickly by, by both armies. So let me amass those and maybe next turn we'll go here and attack. And what we do, we do the move attack. Uh, yeah, that, that way. So now, uh, here is six, I believe. Yes, this is six. Here we have four and uh, five, nine, fourteen, eighteen, twenty-two to six. Twenty-two to six is three to one, and this is, I believe, rough terrain. We have a city here. No, no, it is, it is clear terrain. Okay, so. The three to one stays. Three to one stays. Twenty two to six, and let's see what it will be. Five, not a bad roll. R R. So double retreat. They will get here, 
and of course the infantry can only get one hex forward so those two units will move here not a very dramatic progress definitely not what Stavka had in mind let us see now what we'll get here we have a first panzer army so let me check yes we have we have russian ones well, first panzer army is here and i believe guys that we need to concentrate a bit and because we need to concentrate a bit we need to take this from here and we need to plug some gaps in oh, sorry when we are moving here i forgot to move of course the uh, those guys and they have one two three four five here four okay this is fine they are in the correct place i just just forgot to move move on of hq now those guys can of course activate all their units here but also those three divisions which i moved and one two three four and those guys too those can also be moved uh, let me push them further again back and what shall we do here you know this is a very good defending position which can be crushed there are important places here which can be crushed so what i will do I'm thinking about strengthening this a bit, and on the other hand, sending the, those divisions will go definitely with a um, uh, strategic move. First of all, this one: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yep. Going here in the area of of, of command of those guys. Mm, those can go one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. They can go here. Yeah, and probably one more guys. Uh, Tottenkopf, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. They can be here. Yeah, we'll be reacting accordingly uh, uh, to what was going on, what's happening on the front. Now, as for those units, definitely there will be some attack uh, through the uh, through the wall uh, through the Nipro. Uh, so let me try to plug it in. Here we have uh, Swaviansk, and it's being well defended. Mm. So what I will do, I will move this unit, I will just reshape it a bit and also yeah, I will leave Viking here, maybe those guys will retreat one hex and those, oh, Lysiansk, uh, those will move here. I believe this is what we can do. Okay, let's move on. Where are those Soviet units? This is, uh, okay, I again mess it up, of course. This is here and this is here. Now we got Voronezh front, finally. So those guys will attack. Although it would be much nicer to have reinforcements first which we'll put here and then attack but we'll get what we get now you see this trick we cannot get in the range of both units with the uh, infantry can move one two that's all one two three and that's all one two three and we cannot move further two three we'll be able to attack here and i believe we should so we move here. There will be more than one attack, definitely. Mm -hmm. Now we have interesting situation here. I'm just thinking, thinking. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. 
so we can add those guys to the attack. Here we have two panzer divisions, but we also have some nice, nice, nice stuff uh, to fight with them. Let me try. Let me try it. Or maybe try to go around it. So this is five. Those guys are here, yeah. Now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, 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 they will not get here. Nobody will be able to, to, to keep them in check. Uh, it's uh, not a perfect situation, as you might see. Mm -hmm. But we should push on. Definitely. We actually don't even move those guys. So let me take as much strength as we can and hit as hard as possible. One, two, three, four, five. Yes, that's what we can do. And we also hit here in this cauldron. Then we're going one, two, three, four. Okay. In I'm waiting for the eventual breakthrough. This is one unit, this is another unit. And those two will come here. And we'll move the Voronezh front over here. So they will be able also to activate those units here. So we for sure have one attack. Do we attack here? It's 12. It's 20. It's 30, 3 to 1, and plus, of course, rough terrain. This is 2 to 1. Most probably, we should attack. Uh, we should attack because we need to push forward. We need to push forward, definitely. So the first attack is here. We could potentially, I think, reposition this, this uh, I will check it, double check it. So the five, you, the five strength is defending, the attacking is eight, 12, 20. 20 to five, four to one, and there are no other modifiers, simply four to one. Four to one, two, it's just one retreat. So it's like minor thing, very minor thing. Let me put infantry here. Not huge. Here we have, as I calculated, 30 strength of Soviets, 10 strength of Germans, 3 to 1, rough terrain, 2 to 1. Bit risky, but we need to risk. 3, 2 to 1, nothing. Okay, next turn we'll have definitely larger forces, which will be able to inflict larger losses. Uh, by the way, we could also attack with those guys here. I forgot to move them on 3 to 1, 2 to 1. Actually, with those tanks, we can even hit harder. 18 to 1, 6 to 1, so 5 to 1. Let's do it. 5 to 1 for RR. So those guys goes here and here. And that is being turned around a bit. Sorry for this, completely forgot about those units. Hope, guys, that you can see still some details of the fight, which is taking the place. Not sure about the best zoom option and if we can if we can do anything better here. Trying my best. Let's continue with the turn. Couple of more cheats still. Now we have supply, so we check supply for every unit on the map. From my calculation, there are no units out of supply, even those can trace through those units. So this is fine. Now we got the Soviet reinforcement. So for the Soviet reinforcement, we have here the six packs of reinforcements, and whenever we draw a reinforcement, they will enter. That doesn't mean they enter every turn, that means only when we draw a cheat. 
let me uh, let me show you how it's being done. Okay, reinforcement. Yes. Here we have. We are placed on any railroad hex that can trace a continuous railroad route to a friendly supply source and unblo uh, unblocked by the enemy zones of control. Enemy units and enemy major cities. Exactly. So now we will do it. As you can see, there will be even more reinforcement. There will be also those airborne guns later on. I know these games get more and more interesting the farther you go with the turns. So all those reinforcements, guess what, comes here to the south. They cannot enter hexes uh, which are adjacent to the enemy, but they can move, for example, like here. Yeah, here. Uh, can they be adjacent? No, only on the railroad hexes. So they cannot be adjacent. So let me push the infantry the farthest because they have usually the largest problem. So here there will be some of them. On the railroad hex here. Now let me put the tanks here. I believe no need to push it over there. Now some infantry here. Some infantry. And now it looks much better to push in the direction of the Impro. Okay, two more cheats. Now we have step front. Step front. So this is the black one. And yeah, we'll have two more. And of course it's Voro Nation Southwestern Front. Step front doesn't have a lot of things to do. It's uh, only those units. Those guys can potentially attack those here. This is seven and half of those guys. This is four. Uh, this is nine. If you divide it by two, this is four dot five, which is four. Four plus nine is thirteen. Thirteen to three, four to one. Rough, t rough terrain, three to one. Let's do it. Three to one. This is R. And because there is an enemy zone of control, we are flipped. Beautiful. And they just moved forward. I will, of course, move those guys much closer. Nice. Mm. Progress is probably smaller than expected. Voronish front. Stavka will not be happy. Now, Voronish front can activate now a lot of units. All of those reinforcements, but also one, two, three, four, five, six. Also, all of those units. So, everything will move now. And now we will be able to get to this infantry. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. So what we will do? We'll move against uh, against all those units and just thinking where we can have the biggest push. Probably here. Of course, there is already a second line there. But let me see. Entering here is free. Entering here is another free point. So this is six. No, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's entering his friends and moving from one enemy zone of control to another. That's, of course, much, much more. Hmm. Here we have four points. So many options, guys. So many options. I think we'll start from trying to get hit on those um, Panzer divisions. And what we're planning to do is, yes, to get as many around them as possible. Okay. Here we have also them. So it would be good to get another 20 points. But to get 20 points, my goodness, guys. It's just like craziness. So this is, this is one, two, three, four. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Already not, not possible. 
but let's move those here. Those guys move nice. Now here we will try to push as much as possible. We have four. We can cross plus one for the river, so this is four. Now uh, here one, two, three, four. Let's hope for some nice breakthrough. One, two, three, four, five already not possible. But we can get those guys here. The tanks one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. But you see we are getting out of the command range, which is not good, which we don't want really. Those guys will attack here. Both are slightly smashed. They will go here. Mm -hmm. Those one, two, three, no, they will not get there. One, two, three, four, five. They will be eventually waiting for a breakthrough. We'll move more here. More here. So that's this part. Uh, can we do anything in this part? Uh, not too many options. Yeah, we have one option. We can move all those things here and attack with all of this here. Those tanks will start to do the flanking maneuver. One, two, three, four, five, six. Here. Now Voronezh front will move a bit. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Yeah, if we push them, uh, I won't have a possibility to still activate as many as possible. Okay, a lot of combination, but uh, so it was needed. Now the attacks. Will be one attack here. Will be second attack here. There will be attack here. For sure, there will be attack here. Good. Let's see how it goes this time. Hopefully a little bit better. Now, the last important attack here. So this is five on the German side. Let me see what's below. Nothing. Okay. So this is five. Here we have, again, full strength on this side of the river, half strength on this side of the river. This is 4, this is uh, 5 plus 5, this is 10, so this is 14, and then we have 7, this is 21. 21 to 5, 4 to 1, 3 to 1. Again, 3 to 1, 6, 3 to 1, 6 is RR, so they retreat to hexes, and they again retreat through the uh, enemy zone of control. Let me move those guys through the long, uh, large river. Yeah, good. So hopefully now some breakthrough towards towards um, Kharkiv will be possible. A huge attack here. We added like 16 points, which does not change much because it is 46. To, uh, to 10, this is 4 to 1, 3 to 1, 3 to 1 this time, a little bit better, 3 to 1, 6, RR, which is good because one of the Panzer armies divisions has to flip, and we can get into side this, so, uh, mechanized will go here, non mechanized will go here. Not there. Always some losses on the German side. I believe it was five here, two and three. Now we have slightly more forces. Five, eight, thirteen, twenty-one. Twenty-one, five, four to one, three to one again. Sorry, not so much as I wanted. Three to one, three R. Just retreat. So we retreat here. 
and we'll push for infantry forward. How oh, but for the big, bigger bigger breakthrough. Now we have three here, five, five, four, four, eighteen, six to one. Oh that's a nice. Hang on. Six to one, one just are oh my goodness. That was supposed to be a crushing attack. Okie dock. Or other not okie dock. The last counter we have is of course for the uh, southwestern front. Goes here. And this is that front, which potentially can start attacking here. This is one of the vulnerable spots from the onset of the game. So we'll move some forces here. Strong forces, one, two, three, four. So that's for sure. Now we can potentially also plan to break through here. It will take a little more time to bring forces there. Mm, but we could try planning for this. Uh, yes, so let's let's start. One, uh, this is minor vessels. Two, three, that's all. Two, three, four, five, six. Fine. One, two, three, four, five. And eventually we'll get there. But it will take time. Now the attack from those units here versus three. This is I believe five 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 five. So this is twenty. Twenty-eight is fourteen. Fourteen. We need uh, twenty-eight because of the large river we divide by two. So this is fourteen. Fourteen to three. Pity. Pity we not have not enough units because that means this is uh, four to one. Four to one. Let's let them retreat. No, nothing. Total failure. That way, guys, we achieved the end of a turn. Yep. Turn one. We now do the victory determination and turn one. So, as far as victory determination is concerned, no automatic victory. Some progress, but much smaller than expected of the Russians here. Failed attempt here, little push here. Well, I think after many games of, of Tracy support, I learned how to do the defense properly now. Uh, let me just check how long it took us to play the first turn. And if we have more time and we will be willing to stay, we should play at least one more turn. I will show you how the OKH tokens are working, which would be pretty cool and interesting. Okay, uh, let's pause for now. Okay, guys, let us move to the turn two. I will play one more turn to show you some interesting features of this game. So we move to the next turn. So in this case, we would have more options for German units. Yep, and for the Soviets, I think this is the same as it was previously. Nothing changes. So, in essence, from in the turn two, the Axis command has four cheats to, to, to take and can uh, use two OKH cheats. They, these are the specific cheats. I told you uh, before that. Uh, there is a possibility for the German player not to put their cheats into the cup and, and wait with them. Yeah, that's, that's what you know. But OKH has specific usage depending where they are played from a hand or they are played from, from, the, from the cup. Here it is described. So OK cheats can be played in one of the following ways. From the cup then we can choose one of those three options for the usage, or from the hand as an interrupting order. This cancels um, not uh, if it's this, not the supply uh, cheat, but all other cheats 
and places the just drawn cheat back into the cup and then you may choose one of those options. So it cancels the cheat of the Russia in a sense that it will go back to the cup and will be played later, uh, but it allows you for interruption, for example, some uh, movement of forces. And uh, those three options are HQ activation, activate one axis HQ, whether from the cup or from the hand. OK, H command, activate any units as given on OK, H command table. This is the table with zero CPs under control. They can, we can activate like six units. But the best thing, the best thing is of course supreme command negotiation. So this only when taken from the cup can happen, and that means that Meinstein is negotiating with Hitler. And then um, we receive negotiating points as given in the table here. For now it's free, and we can use for cancelling supreme command order, getting the reinforcements. Stuff like this. So this is really cool. And as the Germans, uh, out of those four possible uh, four possible cheats, will definitely take to OKH. We'll take, of course, the fourth Panzer Army. And I believe it will get dramatically here. And actually, I wanted to move those guys a bit here, so we have larger span of control one two three four five six exactly uh, so that way we will get those force and those will be inactive now for the russians definitely would like to, see to get a reinforcement to voronezh fronts we need to have one of those of course so that's in total six Six chips, and uh, of course the supply. So those three will be inactive. We put everything here uh, for the Russians and supply. For the Germans, I will also do it here. I prefer to move them earlier than, than later. Uh, in this case. And let's see what we shall get. So far, uh, the Germans are able to very well defend themselves, uh, so not, not, not much successes for the Russians. And remember, we have only four turns. Southwestern Front as an active one. So this front, that's good, it will be continuing with attacks here. And we should be already prepared for the attack here. I believe this is uh, five movement points. This we move here, and this we move here. So we will do the two attacks across the river. So we'll be halving the unit strength. Um, here, if I remember correctly, it's 10, 10, uh, 8, so 14, 14, 2, 3, uh, was 4 to 1, and we unfortunately rolled badly last time. Let me put it here, still have some space, you should also see. 4 to 1, and we rolled 1, and we didn't manage to push him, which was a pity. Now we rolled 6 on 4 to 1, which is one lost step for the defenders, and retreating to hexes. We anyhow can only get on this hex. And, uh, but you see, the supply line is open here, that's very important. Really, really important. Okay, we got here. Now this attack, the defending thing is free. We have less forces. Defend is 8, 12, 17, 20, and here below we have 25. If you divide 25 into 12, Dot five, so 12, 12 to 3 is again 4 to 1, so high chances that we'll manage to get. Yeah, not a huge roll, but enough. R, so they retreat, and then we will put some forces across the river, the strongest we have, so the fives. Mm -hmm. Okay, dark. Finally, the crossing starts. Nice. 
this was executed. Now we move forward. What we got? The 4th Panzer Army, they again have time to redress. Okay, 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 okay. So what they will do? Well, 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 they will start moving back, of course. Here, this is free. Uh, okay, can we activate everybody from here? One, two, three, four, five, six, even those guys. Mm -hmm. One, two, three, four, five, six. So those guys too, we can move. So I will move one of those guys to Belgorod and we'll do the defense line also here. That's a good idea. Now, doesn't look bad. Doesn't look bad here either. Uh, let me strengthen this Panzer Division with this Panzer Division. I will also move three, four, five here with this unit, and those guys will concentrate here. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six. Still have possibility to get to them. Both need to get out of this pocket. So this is free for, I think this is good place because it's still rough terrain. Mm, we can leave the infantry here. This is three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, for those guys who will move back a bit. We need to be careful with Kharkov. So you know what? Instead of moving that way, we will move those guys here. And those will move here. Slightly bigger resistance. And yeah, uh, here we have two, two. So we can actually move those guys roughly here and here something about it yep that should be fine we moved a little back let's see what the russians will do they can still surprise and i think they can do some trick show you later on first panzer army so the first person army is here and they actually could try counterattack on those guys but of course we need also to try to plug in the hole here I'm not sure if it's time really to move back in this area not necessarily maybe individual divisions one it is three, four, five, and three, four, five. Yeah, because the situation can get dramatic in a moment. And if you would like to contact with 17 to 10, it's 1.5. It's not huge chances of of success. So, but still, we can keep them in check. And also, they will be out of supply. Yeah, where are those huge Russian reinforcements? Where are they? Here they are, Soviet reinforcements. So all those guys come here. We have some special unit with a black corner. That means that we can upgrade some one of the tanks on the map, even if it's you know hit tank. Let me see where I have some nice tanks which would require such upgrade. I don't believe we have any hit tanks, so I will upgrade a tank here. I will put two tanks here. You see where the plan goes now. Yes, you see it very clearly. So this was upgraded. We will be hitting here, of course. We probably not managed to immediately get from there five so this 
to run units. We'll go here. Yeah, and we will be pushing. Here you can get the infantry even here, because this is railway. And it's railway this goes here, here and here, so those guys can give them. Hmm. Railway can bring them here very nicely. And here. Good. This is a good stuff. Now uh, yeah, as you can see, I push most of the uh, reinforcements here because I really believe this is this is the best spot for for them. Although here it might also someday soon be good idea. We are getting now Voronezh front, so now the Russians are attacking here, and definitely we would like to do some some nice hitting. So those two tanks with one. Two, three, four, five. That direction. And no, they don't want to be attacking those panzer divisions. Those guys can move three, four, five, six. Okay. We'll try to get on the balls. This is five, five, this is four, four. Mm hmm. Do we have a halved value through the minor river? Attack a halved even if breached. Hmm. Okay, so we still should be able to push them out. So here we have strong attack plant. Here we have a reasonably strong attack plant. Now in those areas. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they still can have access to those. So we can try to attack the one. Uh, one, two, three, four, four. Let them go here. And let them go here. Those guys can attack from here. So this would be attack on the other end. Now, this turn, there will be some attacking, definitely. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, those guys go here because I believe this could be a weak spot. Those guys go here. Or alternatively, we can push the infantry there. We have those four and they go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ah, too much because of the rivers. So, no, no, no. Cannot do it that way. So we push those guys here. Who can help them? Most probably those beautiful guards. And uh, now we have five, 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 six, six. And here we would have four defending. So somebody else would be very helpful. Maybe another tank. Okay, so second point of attack is also defined. Now we probably would like to push, or even if not a push, start encircling those guys here. Because this is something which is into one, two. Let's move here. Let's move here, of course. Slowly but steadily, we'll get there. There will be no attack here, it's too dangerous. Mm -hmm. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll need to move the Voronezh front a bit. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we need to be standing here. Ah, I forgot about those guys. So if I have those guys, I can instead use guards here. And then, hoping for the breakthrough in this area, or alternatively, move them here to prepare something large. Sorry for such a long planning, but you know, guys, 
Maybe it's time for a break. One, two, three, four, five, six. Those guys will be a follow up attack here. They just arrive in here. And those will go here. Now, if we have Warner's front here, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So still okay. One, two, three, four. Okay, this should be fine. Now, after this prolonged planning phase, sorry for this, had fun with this. Will be attacked Beogorod first. Uh, what do we have? We have 10, 19, 19 here, and half of both forces. 7, 12, 6, 25, 25, 2, 5. And uh, there will be like two modificators. Shift, column shifts, 25 to 5. Uh, this is 5 to 1, and then 3 to 1. Mm -hmm. On 3 to 1, we can achieve something. 3 to 1, 4 is R, is exactly what we need. We'll be overstacked here, so we need to move one hex further, like this. But the good thing is, Beogorod has fallen, and those units are really, really depleted. 2, 2, Another two and three, so there is a chance to smash them. We can still turn this round. Now, here is a soft underbelly because it's four against 12, 22, 11, 33, 33 to four. This is eight to one. If you add to this, um, if you add to this, uh, the rough terrain 7 to 1, maybe something nice. 7 to 1 to RR. That means that both of those units are destroyed. Yep, first destroyed units. So now the tanks can get help and one around here. And of course, we would need. I would need to check uh, this rule about the relocation of the of the headquarters. Uh, I think you cannot permanently kill the headquarter. Uh, that's what I remember. Which is which is of course quite quite uh, quite understandable. Yeah, uh, I remember a relocation headquarters generally. Yeah. So here we have headquarters, only one HQ can be stacked. HQ is relocated if it is destroyed in combat or if it cannot trace a line of flight. An activated HQ can be moved by relocation instead of using normal movement. Exactly. So, uh, mm, a relocation must be at least five hexes away from the initial hex, must not be in an zone of control. HQ must be able to trace line of supply. So, Nothing bad will happen to them, yeah, even if they are destroyed in the fight. Yeah, they have like one strength, so nothing. But what is more worrying, you see, the gap has opened. Let's see. Uh, it might be good time for the German forces to start getting the reinforcements and putting them here, which will unfortunately take our uh, CRT from the convenient uh, space. Attack here. This is free. And attack is, I believe, 24, 10 plus 14, 24, 8 to 1. 8 to 1, 5, they are destroyed. And the front is starting to crumble. Would it be enough time for the Russians to overrun the, uh, the Dnipro River? Not sure, but at least here, does it look good? Now, the attack here. This is 6 plus 4, this is 10, and uh, this is through the river, so this is 5, 5, 13, 13, 2, 3, this is 4 to 1, the town 3 to 1, 3 to 1, 3, just air, and they need to go here, and the tanks, 
Oh, wait, yes, the tanks. No, no, the infantry will go here. Infantry will go here. Good. Now the situation looks completely different. That turn than it was previously. Let's continue. Getting interesting. Hopefully you see how this game develops. And as I told you, the longer scenario with slightly different victory conditions plays even differently because you need to get cities, destroy uh, opposition, and of course also uh, you know uh, mm -hmm. not only get through the Dnipro but also to the breakthrough breakthrough hexes. Supply, which is uh, yep something which will hurt some of the people on the map. So who will be hurting the Russians uh, near Swabiansk? Now let me just open my tray. We will get some out of supply markers. So yeah, we get one out of supply here. Those guys are in supply. Here there's still supply. Here there's still supply. So this should be fine. Even here there's supply. So nobody except those guys who just moved outside of, uh, of the river. Is hurt. Uh, what means out of supply? Out of supply actually gives minus two strength to the attack. Uh, if uh, out of supply unit is again checked versus supply and cannot trace, it will be isol isolated. Then the movement will be halved. The attack and defense will be like minus minus one, minus two. Okay, so supply was played. Let's see. What Next, we will get okay. This time we got Voronish front again. That's a tricky. That's a tricky thing because, as you shall see, the um, Germans cannot play OK H and get some units here. Uh, on the other hand, we need to be conscious of the fact that if we get out of the range of this um, HQ, <laughs> we'll not be able to order the units, yeah? Just, just remember about it. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Those guys can go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, not good, not very good idea. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can get even here. Again, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. I believe we should push forward. Those can get one, two, three, four, five, four, uh, maximum here. Okay, we cannot be too crazy about those moves, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So the maximum place where the where the Voronezh front can get. So the headquarters, uh, fortunately, later on, it will be changed to Ukrainian front. And so it will have a larger movement allowance is here. And from here, six, I want them to have a six, uh, um, six range to be able to activate other units, of course. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, somewhere over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So this crossing, can be taken by the by the Russians already. Yeah, here also. One, two, three, four, five, six, up to here, over there. So you see what we shall do. We should start cutting the supply, and here potentially also some some good stuff mm, could happen. Okay, so those tanks go one, two, three, four, five. They will be standing here. This infantry goes here. Will be good to attack with something over there. One, two, three, four, five, six. I believe this is a good idea. 
those guys can no they cannot move from and they can plus one for river plus two for exiting plus two for entering this is six points exactly here we have already the infantry now what about the south what about the south how crazy we should be not too much i believe we have infantry here one two three four five six yeah i believe this is this less crazy option was going to go one two three four five six and will be out of range unfortunately so that we don't want we prefer one two and attack both will pull here one two three four five six one two three four five six or even here we can help with this fight those poor guys let them stay here now this cauldron wow what should we do here there are some powerful units here so we can make a life harder for them one two three four And okay. Let me pause for a moment before we continue. Hi guys, sorry for the interruption. I'm back with you and ready to, to, to play further. So we are moving the Voronezh front. Now a couple of more units still to be moved. We'll take both tanks. Six movement points. So we move one, two, three, four, five, six. Just marked where I would like to move. Then we take those tanks and infantry. We move one, two, three. It should be fine. Or even four, five, six. I know that they will be outside our uh, zone of, of uh, activation. But still, I would like to, to have this very important crossroad occupied. Now, uh, we need to move some of the infantry forward and some of the tanks. So, first of all, those tanks and motorized. One, two, three, four, five. That should be just enough. Mm -hmm. Now we can move this infantry forward. One, two, three, four. They will be keeping the front. And now we move those guys. One, two, three. I think it's completely enough to move them here. Mm -hmm. There will be no attacks, definitely no. Pushing some of the infantry forward. One, two, three. This gap. And where we would like to have our best. Okay, Warner's front, one, two, three. And this goes here. Good. And we also had, of course, a possibility to activate those units. We have a reach to them. <coughs> and also those units. And here we have decent formidable forces, but with time, I think they are getting quicker and weaker. So why not to push forward? Let's try to get some fighting. Okay. Can we attack them? They have like six. This is <clears throat> ten and half of this. This is nine. Uh, Seventeen. How about eight? Eight? Eighteen. Eighteen to six. Three to one. Two to one after, um, after the difficult terrain. Let's see. Probably we lost. Unfortunately, 2 to 1, A1. Yeah. So we have a casualty. Happens. Sometimes happens. All in all, are looking pretty decent for the um, 
for the incident. Now, the uh, HQ cannot trace the supply of the Fourth Panzer Army, so an HQ is relocated if it's destroyed in combat or if it cannot trace a line of supplies to a friendly supply source. Must be at least five hectares away from the initial hex, must not be in an enemy zone of control. The HQ must be able to trace line of supply to a friendly supply source. Mm, it would be really unpleasant to leave those good units here. Fortunately, uh, the advance, Russian advance was too far, so let me move them around here. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have still okay age tokens, which will be helping us to get those units out. Okay, let me you move those guys here. One, two, three, four, five. It's desperate times calls for desperate measures. That's how we call it. Now we'll go with the farther tokens. Okay, we got OKH. So OKH we can, uh, as I told you, use in a three possible ways. It's from the cap. So activate one axis HQ. Activate any units given in, uh, in the OKH command table. So we can activate six units, or we can also get the reinforcements. Question is whether we should not activate some of those decent units here as long as they have the. Oh, sorry. Before we draw this, we should do the attack here, of course. I forgot about it, sorry, I was too fast with uh, drawing this, so let me just calculate. For here, 12, 18, 22 to 3, 7 to 1, and they are outside. Uh, this, sorry, this should be before we draw all the age. 7 to 1, 4, I believe this could be painful. 714, this is RR1. That means that they are flipped, and because they escape through the enemy mm, zone uh, of control, they also destroyed the tanks. Goes here, those tanks goes here. And now the road to the Dnipro lays almost open. Now for OKH, we can either bring the reinforcements or we can use six units. Um, there is this temptation to move those guys here. This is five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And they can still get out of this mess. Let's do it. We order six units. Let me double check if there is any restriction on ordering those, those units because that would be tricky if we need, for example, be able to trace a supply or something else like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, each command. Okay. The Axis player may activate a number of his units as given in OKH command table depending on the number of CPs current depth. Those units can be freely chosen at will independently from any command ranges restrictions. This is not a bad thing, I believe. We want to do it and we want to activate six of such units. And we will need to move them back. We have too many, excuse me, Panzer divisions here and not enough. Uh, and not enough uh, units over, otherwise. So, uh, we will move this Panzer Division. Okay, we will move those two Panzer Divisions. We probably need to start moving also here. Uh, first of all, those guys. Uh, where we were? Uh, yes. They were here, so it's like five, six, seven, eight, 
a little bit here. Yeah. Okay, well, just thinking of it's really the best way to do it that, that direction. Thinking loudly now, guys, how to avoid the disaster. We can go, this is six, unfortunately. We lack due to all those um, various uh, rivers, we actually lack the possibilities to move. Um, but we don't want to leave them there because they will be dying and that's not something we would like to, uh, to allow them for. Uh, those guys can move free. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Nicely. Yeah. So let's, let me start with those moves. Ooh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We can have those guys here. Those guys can be free. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Second Panzer Division here. Not enough, guys. This is still this, this is still not enough. We have too many forces here, so we move like five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. We'll put them here. Let's do it that way, so we have at least slim chances of of doing anything. Mm -hmm. uh, these are four units so far. Here we have also some decent units, unfortunately, which will not be able to get out. Here I'm not sure if we should not attack last turn. Maybe that was not so necessary. Okay, two more units we can move. So I believe time for some regrouping. Uh, over here, one, two, three, four, five. They can get here and plug the gap. Uh, it's not looking good, guys. Not looking good. One, two, three, four, five. Those guys. One, two, three, four, five. I'll grab her here. Yeah, here. Rather him because I want Viking also go from there. So this is six units. It's all crumbles. Okay, age goes here, and now we have another. Okay, age. We can get another move here, which might not be such a bad idea. And we probably. And uh, do we have them on the road? Unfortunately not, that's bad. I would prefer them to be on the road, I will show you why. Sorry for those changes, just just as examples of play. Uh, let's treat it that way. Then they came with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So yeah, that's much better idea and to do it this way. We again will move six units. And the following units will move those two. This is five, ten. So we managed to get out of the harm's way, at least for now. It's even better to do it that way. So those tanks will not be able to move so quickly. Those can go one, two, three, four, five, six. One stays here. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And that goes here. Mm -hmm. So these are four units. We can still move two more. Questions where we would like to do it. Most probably the Viking division will have to move, unfortunately. This, which might be really needed over here in a moment. Uh, it it crumbles everywhere, <laughs> guys. It crumbles everywhere. Simple like this: one, two, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, ten. 
gonna have a Viking here trying to plug the gap over there. This is fifth unit, and the six will be this lonely division here. Wow! But actually, this is how you play as a German. You need to plug all those holes. Now, what we got? South, south, and front. So this front, they don't have too much possibilities for attack. Those guys can move here. This is eight points. We have still 10 points here, so this is 18. We'll move this. This is 22. Those guys will move here. 22 to 6 is, I believe, 3 to 1. 2 to 1 due to the terrain. 2 to 1, 3. Most probably nothing. 2 to 1, 3. Nothing. It's really hard to, to, to do any headway there. And the last token, it's the token for this front. Let's see if this front can do anything. And they can activate one, two, three, four, five, six. So all those units. Where to attack? Most probably we would like to push once again here. This is then here. Here we have. 9, 15, 7, 17 to 6, wow, that would not be good. Okay, guys, so I just finished a couple of last moves here, the step front moved a bit, as you can see, uh, and, and, and it was just, just finalizing the, the, the game. Uh, we will not be continuing uh, more uh, today, but two turns out of four for the shorter scenario I think is enough. I want this material to be short enough to be still engaging for you. I hope that you see how interesting this game is. I'm really uh, curious and probably played offline how the situation will end. This race for Dnipro, this attempt by Germans to, to, to plug all the holes, uh, possibility of Russians also attacking here, and what is even more important, the possibility of playing completely differently when you use them as a longer scenario, because the victory conditions are different. Really, really like it, and I'm glad that VUCA uh, issued this game. This is a uh, yeah, new edition, a uh, new, new version of this game. Beautiful, simply you can see how beautiful this. I like this pastel colors, I like pre-rounded counters. This is really, um, really good. Uh, on top of this, we have very much solitaire-friendly uh, setup here with all of those cheats. You can play two hands very, very nicely. I strongly encourage you to try this, uh, to try this game, Traces of War, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> Traces of War from Vuka Simulation, and uh, definitely there will be more materials like this from me. Uh, Donor Schlag is already set up on the table next to this, so you can rest assured I will be back with more interesting content. For today, that's everything. If you like this video, kindly please give thumbs up. Uh, if you'd like to see more content like this, Please subscribe. Every subscriber, every subscription is very important for us, for such a small content creator like the Board Games Chronicle. Use the comment section if you'd like to add something, ask for anything. And thank you very much for watching and being with me today. Thanks. Bye.